Natural healers within us are the true healers of disease. Hippocrates said that a long time ago. So I'm gonna tell you a story about hand washing and the inventor of hand washing, who pretty much didn't get the credit until later on. So in the 1800s, it was common for hospitals, or some hospitals, and Vienna Hospital, for example, to handle cadavers and then go deliver babies. And this was done without washing their hands. It was something like one in 10 women would die from purpural fever. I might be saying that wrong. Purpural fever. And so a doctor known as Ignaz Samuelweis theorized the connection between a lack of hand washing and a high fever and death rate in new mothers in the maternity ward. So he mandated hand washing and chlorinated lime water for anyone that entered his department. The deaths of purpural fever dropped immediately. I believe, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it was almost a, a 10 times reduction in death. So it was like maybe one in 100 women would have gotten it and died versus 10 out of 100. So then he took this information to the rest of the hospital and he urged the rest of the doctors to wash their hands. He talked about his experiment. He talked about the data that he found. He did an actual interventional study where he controlled variables and then he tracked the data. And did the doctors praise him? Did the doctors thank him? No, they shamed him. He was eventually fired. In fact, most of his life, he tried to urge the medical establishment and criticize them. He wanted them to wash their hands. And what did they do? Well, they further demonized him and ridiculed him and discredited him until he eventually died, by all accounts, of going crazy. It seemed like the doctors at the time didn't like the idea that something they were doing was contributing to the death of their patients. Status quo bias, confirmation bias, countless bias are involved when you're talking to somebody and you're telling them to change something they're doing and you're trying to make a connection between something they're doing and harm for someone else. We don't like to hear that. We don't like to admit that. We don't like to see that. And generally, when you have a large group of people, the larger the group, the harder it is to convince them because the status quo bias is so strong. So the more people you have, the less likely you're gonna get anybody to change their mind because of social proof. It's true for any idea. The more people that believe something, the harder it is to get them to change their mind. We can see this in 2020 with masks and all the nonsense going on. There's also a quote I think about, and I've talked about a lot in this channel and elsewhere. Upton Sinclair said, it's hard to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on not understanding it. Think about that. You're a doctor, you've been prescribing drugs and pharmaceuticals for years, you've been telling your patients to eat a low fat diet, you've been doing all these things. And then some of these young upstarts, maybe young internet gurus and whatever come along and tell you that you're wrong and tell you that you've been basically hurting patients. What do you think your response is gonna be? Do you think your response is gonna be, oh, thank you for helping me correct the error in my ways? Or maybe the 10 research papers you published on your practice or this topic or low fat or whatever it is, for you to admit that you did that wrong or those papers were wrong, think about what that does to your credibility. Think about what that does to maybe your track record if you're trying to get tenure as a professor or whatever. A lot of the research and the intellectual community right now is based on papers published. Whether or not those papers are good, whatever. It's about papers published and how many citations you get. What this means is there are a bunch of incentives for the current establishment of scientists, doctors, medicals, corporate executives, et cetera, to maintain the things that are normal or understood. But if you look back in history, never has what's normal and understood stood the test of time, aside from a few facts that we know for sure, like maybe germ theory and certain things that we learn that are these great scientific breakthroughs that do stand the test of time. But those are like one in a million instances anyways. Most of the time, if you look back through history, Professionals, experts, scientists, doctors, whoever, were wrong most of the time. Let me say that again. Most of the time in history, if you look back at any, the thing that people thought they knew was true has been wrong most of the time. Most of the time. Okay, most of the time we've been wrong. And so in 2020, this is no different. Yet every generation, the ego and the hubris is at a max because we think, oh, we're the furthest along. We know everything. Yet in 10 years, 20 years, 50, 100, 1,000, invariably, we're going to look like cavemen to the future generations because the things that we think we know or whatever, that we cling to, that we were so dogmatic about are going to be laughed at by the future historians and peoples of 2100 and 2200 and 2500, et cetera. If we get there, if we don't blow ourselves up first. What this means for you is if you give your trust to experts, the government, your neighbor, the guy at the gym, the trainer who's bulky, who's probably doing steroids. If you give your trust to people blindly without knowing 
all the context, without doing your own critical thinking, your own research, without listening to your gut, and then without finally testing for yourself, you're taking a big gamble with your health. So a lot of what I'm trying to promote with my message with Escape from Fragility and the Ancestral Mind, which you can find over at Colin.coaching, find links to everything below. And also I'm on YouTube on my other personal channel, Colin Stuckert. What I'm trying to do is to encourage people to take responsibility for their life and their health. You cannot leave it up to experts, to institutions, to the status quo, to the way things are. And yes, I know you're busy. And yes, I know you want to watch your Netflix and do this and do that and whatever. But these things are things that will affect you for your whole life. So if you can become passionate about your health, if you can become interested in your health, if you can become interested in these topics, then it's just going to be easy to do the research, to understand, and to build a plan for yourself. And then you don't really have to think about it that much. I know when I'm eating something I should be eating and when, I, and when I'm eating something that I should be eating. I know when I'm sticking to my plan and when I'm not. I know when I'm training not enough, too much, or just the right amount. I know when I'm sleeping not enough, too much, and just enough. And I know these things because I've dialed in, I've done the research, I've experimented, I've figured out a lot of things, and I've come to my own conclusions based on all the disparate information. Some people like ice baths, they want to go super extreme. For me, I prefer saunas and hot treatment. So I'm thinking about getting a sauna. I probably should do ice baths from time to time. Maybe I'll get like a big bear outside and do that from time to time. But, but I'm okay with maybe not getting a little bit of the benefit of ice baths because I'm not taking like a cold shower every morning or doing an ice bath every morning or whatever. I'm just not ready to go to that extreme. Maybe that will change at some point. When it comes to the carnivore diet, I'm okay with about an 80% animal-based way of eating. I like my other foods. I like chocolate from time to time. I like certain plant foods. I like some roasted potatoes from time to time. I like maybe making a gluten-free mac and cheese from time to time. In fact, we've even been doing a regular einkorn wheat mac and cheese from time to time. I'm still lean and healthy and fit, and it's not affecting me, and I'm not taking it to any extreme, so I'm okay with adding those things in here and there. I don't need to be dogmatic about it. When you have the knowledge, though, and you can make the qualitative decisions for yourself based on the information and based on knowing your biology and what works for you, you have the ultimate power over your health and future. Now, obviously, this idea can extend to your finances. Are you just putting your money in a mutual fund and letting Wall Street basically gamble with your money? Are you trusting that the government's going to pay you Medicare, or Medicaid, or retirement or whatever? Are you trusting that there's going to be Social Security? And so you're not making plans of your own. You're not getting your own investments. You're not buying gold and silver to protect yourself or maybe Bitcoin. Well, those are all major risks because then when you've worked your whole life to retire so that you can basically not have to work every day and then nothing's there to support your lifestyle. And if you actually look an inch below the surface of what's going on with all that, you see that for you to put your trust that the money's going to be there, the government's going to be there, you know, your pension's going to be there, whatever, for, for you to put trust into those things, just because that's what everybody does and that's what you've been told to do is normal or whatever, you'll see that just an inch below the surface, how precarious that proposition actually is. And that will, should compel you to take all of it into your own hands. Get your plan B, get your second passport, learn about gold, silver, and Bitcoin, why you should want to have that. Maybe consider owning some real estate instead of just putting your money blindly into the market, which is extremely manipulated and overpriced and all the fake money they're printing. Don't keep thousands of dollars in your bank account just sitting there with no purpose or end because it's probably going to eventually hyperinflate. On and on and on these things go. And again, I got plan B over at Colin.coach. I got how to buy gold, Bitcoin, et cetera. Over at Colin.coach, up at the top says guides. Also hop in the newsletter and get more info like this. Do something with this information. Realize that what the experts know every single day is going to change. And what they think they're so certain about is also likely to change. And so if you let them infect your mind with what they think is right, even if they're not going at it from a nefarious way, even if they believe what they're saying, even if they want to help you, it doesn't mean you can take the risk of not thinking for yourself. Because guess what? A lot of the doctors that preach low fat, this and that, they think they're doing what's right because that's what all the doctors do. That's what the research says. That's what the pharmaceuticals prop up and, 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 and promote. That's what a lot of the funded studies show, even though they're bad studies. Do something with this information. More importantly, take responsibility for your life, for your health, for your finances, for your future, for, your, for the schooling of your kids even. We're, we're finding that schools are becoming propaganda machines. Like I heard that there was a high school playing the absurd documentary Cowspiracy. It's just like, what is going on? You have to take ownership. You have to take control of your life. The government is not supposed to be there to take care of you. Big daddy nanny government was not what the founding fathers had in mind. And there will be major repercussions for the millions of Americans that follow that route. Hey, hey, Colin here. Got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. 
This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles, such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are gonna help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes. 